Night of the Living podcast is always ad-free for patrons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Howdy. Welcome to... Oh, I should have come up with like a nun-themed thing. Well, Andy, get your nun. Let us pray. <laughs> Let us pray. Welcome to Night of Living Podcast. Um, services start at 10. Sister Amy. Please have a seat. Are you Mother Superior? I don't know what I am. Um, I am Mother. I am not a mother. <laughs> You're you mothering. See. She's Mother uh, right now. <laughs> I am Mother. Um... Yeah, welcome to our show. There's Andy. Blessed be. There's Freddie. Uh, hey, y'all. Uh, make sure that you clean up after the potluck that y'all had in the <laughs> general purpose room, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Mamie. And I don't know what Freddie's doing. I'm doing a real nun. I know. Yeah. A real life nun. Salt of the earth. Let me get a roll. Let, let me smack her fingers real good. Yeah. Um, ah. yeah. Um, none of us were... Ah, there's your there's your pun right there. Ah! Ah. None of us grew up in like Catholic school or anything like with nuns or anything, right? Mm. Yeah, n- n- neither. Did I mean, I. I've been to a couple of services, but in Never weddings, with a nun were nuns there? Uh, like milling about. Oh, they mill. <laughs> I've known several nuns in my life. Clients from my old job. Yeah, some of them were nuns. They can have money. I thought yeah. they had to take a vow. Well, they they act they do, but they have a control. Their account is part of the archdiocese mm. uh, accounts. It's, they don't have like a, their own account. Oh, okay. Weird. So they were handling uh, their parish's money or whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't really understand how that all works exactly, but um, it's a it's a front anyway, right? S- super sweet ladies, to to a person I've I've enjoyed. I've never had the evil nun experience. They've never wrapped your knuckles. That, that's how they get you. Yeah, they lure they, you in by the uh, their gentle nature. Yeah, we got some scary nuns coming up in our uh, discussion on Immaculate, a movie made this fucking like decade. Yeah, that I and I rarely want that, we're but just this was a, great. Yeah, we're just was. a little bit behind the times. Just a little bit. Um, and it's what are we? What are we going with? Andy, get your nun. None your business. None and, of that now. It's Andy, get your nun. Because I already made art. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Nuns on the run. Well, <laughs> I well it was the first like the thing sequel. Andy said. It was a continuation of our, our previous uh, theme we had. Andy, get your pun. Andy, get your pun. With yeah. the uh, pun titles. Pun titles. Yeah. And so, this is this is like a this is a hat on a hat. This is a pun within a pun. <laughs> it's a reference. It's within. It's like a to uh, another pun. It's like punception. Yeah, you've punsepted yourself. Or turducken. You are a turducken. I mean. It's probably not a great pun. I'm sure we could probably could have we come could up sit. With a better one. It's all right, but, but you that's make a what lovely nun. On. I don't know if you saw the picture, but you make a lovely nun. You do. Um, so yeah. We're gonna talk about an actually scary nun movie. Looking at you, nun movies from the Conjuring universe. Shade. We're shade gonna, of it all. Uh if, I don't know if anybody's got their hopes up for the nun conjuring universe, but uh we're avoiding those. Yeah, no, thank you. They're not good movies. Yeah, they're well, None they're, of that they're a drag and they're not interesting too. Right. On top of that, Why do, I just, and also I, I don't like, like that universe anyway. Yeah. We don't have to pit women against each other, you guys. Just nuns. <laughs> just <laughs> not movies. Yeah. Not the women themselves. You none, say. On, none on non-violence. That's cool. Were you doing a dwarf on golf or something, joke? No, just none on non-violence. Oh. It's hard to say none on non none on non. Yeah. Violence. No, no, no. It is. No, 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 no. Yeah. I say we stop now. That was fun. Yeah, I think I derailed everything. That no, no, no. Got some none fun. No none fun, fun for you. Um. So how's everybody doing? What you got? What's happening? I got a nervous dog. Yeah. She's, she's down here on my feet. My right farting now. dog lately has been. She's been a little withdrawn, and we think it's because. We did the most horrible thing in the world to her. We put her in a headlock to cut her nails. <laughs> yeah. And I only got the back ones done. You did a great job on the back. The front, yeah. she looks like Freddy Krueger out yeah. front. And now she's like avoiding us. She'll like run through the living room if we're in there. Like, yeah. I got to get past them fast. 
Yeah, she's like, can't talk, no time. <laughs> you should uh, Late. Re- relax her by setting up a little spa and those little bowls that you oh. soak your fingers in. Is that all I had get, to do? Get some palm olive. Play some new age music. <laughs> You're soaking in it, Madge. I straight up thought I have some like lavender like scented oil and I'm like, maybe I could put some on her somewhere as an aromatherapy tool. <laughs> she's so like, we eh, she's sleeping right now. So she's fine. She's chill now. I can pretend to be a Vietnamese nail tech. <gasps> could you? Oh. What do you think, Elsa? Get those freaking nails, man. They're claws now. Girl, they're like growing in. Ugh, Jesus Christ. Like, are they so long that they're crawling under? One is, yeah. One, well, you got one we got to get. Yeah, that's <laughs> Why won't she just let me do the thing? It would take two seconds. Well. Let me do it while you're let's, sleeping. Let's turn the tables. Would you let uh, Elsa cut your nails? <laughs> <laughs> so put yourself in her shoes. You know what? When you put it like that. Wow, Andy, that's, that, you just blew my mind. I mean, I'm not even going to say that's illogical because she doesn't have thumbs or knowledge of how to use clippers so it, or even uh, the words to tell me yeah, so what's going about on. It. I'm sure the prospect of you cutting her nails are just as terrifying if she did yours. But yeah. I have done it multiple times and never once did she die right but you also have to remember dogs have the uh memory of a goldfish it just really annoys the shit out of me because that bitch will remember the word treat say treat and she's up that'll never go away but god forbid she retains the knowledge that getting your nails cut does not hurt or kill you anyway i'll get over it one of these days um other than that um we (laughs) I'm going to admit something. I didn't think, I thought, I would have told you I've seen Troll 2. I would have told you I've seen all of it. It's very silly. But then I watched it last night and I realized I have not seen all of it. And it is extra super duper silly. Um, What parts do you remember seeing? Like the... uh, The green food. And the guy that's like, uh, the guy with glasses screaming. (laughs) The guy who's uh, the tree. It turns into a tree, but he's still sarcastic. Yeah. It's a... It's a classic for a reason, but it makes me think like we we need to appreciate our bad so bad they're good and fun movies more. Well, you mean as a society? As a society. No. We need to celebrate and have more of them. I mean, I think they Am I are wrong? for they are for us right. who are um the the we are the the bits that the broom missed that get pushed <laughs> to the sides. It's for those people whose brains we need that alternative <laughs> to to go in and watch something and realize that the stakes of television are zero mm-hmm. in reality, you know? I mean, it's the incompetence is such a delight to watch. Um and I don't know. Again, what was happening? I'd say between 1988 and 1992 with the clothes and the hair. Well, it was just bad. It was all bad. Yeah. It was curly. It was crunchy. Bad. Yeah. Well, that's why I said bad. like uh, these are millennials and people didn't li- that live through the 80s. They have a very uh, rose colored glasses idea of the 80s. Oh, yeah. You watch Troll 2. That's the real 80s. Or. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like. Yeah, well, certain, wasn't that 90 yeah. or something? It was like late 80s. Late 80s. But like, you know how certain styles of the 80s are coming back? Yeah. Um, but certain things just stay, like, you know, uh, giant bangs, yeah. crunchy bangs. Never came back, did it? Never came back. So yeah. they're very selective of yeah. of what they br- choose to bring back. They're like, the, the 90s. 90s are back. Kids love the 90s fashion. No, they don't. Um, do they have chunky socks that they roll their jeans up and then they pulled the sock over the part where they rolled the jeans? Uh, are they doing that? No hyper then No. Mm. Be very specific. Do they have uh, clothes that fit? No, because <laughs> everything in the nineties was big. Mm-hmm. Ocean Pacific, right? Is that sure. one of the brands we have? I don't know. I don't see silk shirts coming back. But we watched also um, another to be um, find a movie called Intruder. Uh, Freddy is impossible to stump. Like I'm like, oh, Freddy, this looks like a cool movie. He's like, oh yeah, I've seen that. It's pretty good. Like I can't find but anything weird and new for him. You guys, you gotta think the the one of all the things that we've Intruder is not that I've never heard of. It's this It's not as obscure as you think it is. Because, I know, probably not because of Sam Raimi and Sam Raimi's in yeah, it and Bruce Campbell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like I've never heard of it, so I've therefore it's obscure. It. Uh, what's the plot? So maybe I. I think you like. I loved this movie. Maybe I've seen it according to Freddie. It was ninety, I believe, and boy was it. 
Um, the clothes, the blousey pants. Um, it's set in a grocery store. It's a bunch of people that like the owner and the manager, and then like the kids, the cashier and the stock boys and everything. Ted Raimi is one of them. It's like the end of the night and they're going to work late to inventory or something. Yeah. Something like that. And one of the girl's exes like got out of prison and he's like stalking her. And there's a killer that's all loose. you really need to know. <laughs> in like, the grocery store? And it all takes place in the grocery it's, store. It's a great slasher movie. I actually really Ooh, it, Do they take really advantage of the uh, grocery store setting by killing people with uh, grocery store items? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, that is fun. exactly what they do, and they do it brilliantly. <laughs> yeah. actually, there's some really great kills. Is the uh, meat slicer involved yeah. at all? Yeah. Oh, that was a gnarly ass scene. They kind of, uh, you know, are some they, carrots involved? Fear Street, no. Fear Street, kind <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah, uh, but this is like from that scene. This is like Fear Street, but like for like gore hounds. And this was uh, noteworthy too, because wasn't it K and B? Yeah, who did the effects? Yeah, it was interesting because Sam Raimi plays a character I've never seen him act. This is the first time I've seen him act. Um, he was great. And uh, and it, it forced me to start because I start IMDBing and Wikipediaing and like you know I'm always looking for weird deaths, and it just turns out there's no weird deaths, but all these people, it, Quentin Tarantino, Sam Raimi, the guy Scott Spiegel, I think that was his name who directed this, all intertwine and all like bros from I didn't know their like backstory is knowing each other and helping each other out. A lot of great genre material came out of that that glom of people you were just talking about that i don't like that glom i don't like that uh, phrase of a, a glom of people of glom. That clump <laughs> that sounds horrific that um <laughs> i don't know uh it's, just it's very cronenberg that splat of people i don't because it would be weird to call them like a fraternity or something you could just like, say group group <laughs> <laughs> that particular <laughs> no but group is too generic you need glom for this group it's a it's a click it's a group yeah a Maybe murder I'm, of I guess I'm a just murder easily, of creative. I'm easily grossed out, I guess. Glom. A <laughs> glop. I have to say, uh the Raimi brothers. The yeah. uh, the um genes are strong in that family because oh I saw them at uh Whole Around. They right away you know like, exactly. Yeah. Like there's three of them, like they're all different ages. It could be triplets. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't I, I knew there was a third Raimi uh as of the time that they released the listings for yeah. this show. I didn't know there was a third Ramy. It was like a night. It was a pleasant about surprise. Horror weekend. Yeah. 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 There's probably a fourth hitting the attic. Who knows? Like, Who knows? The fourth Ramy. What if we get another Howard and brother? And the fourth too? Hemsworth yeah. and the sixth Howard brother uh, and the eighteenth. I ran out of. An Olsen triplet. Baldwin. <laughs> or a Quaid. Or a Quaid. There's too many of those. Anyway. Too many Baldwins and too many Quaids. Um, Wahlbergs. I mean, we got to slow down. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> I think the Wahlbergs are uh, dying out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're Catholic, so I'm sure they're um, procreating the next generation. Yeah, 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 don't worry. I don't I, know. No, I just mean they're disappearing from my uh, from my understanding of the world. Oh, they are just not part of pop culture to you anymore. Right. Yeah, I think to most people. Yeah. I mean, Mark Wahlberg, I guess. But does anybody really like him anymore? Haven't we all just agreed that he's kind well, of fucking weird and we're done? He's kind of has dropped out of life a little bit. Like know. public life. He's he makes too many dude. movies yeah. with Mel Gibson post, I hope you get raped by a pack of. I'll just stop there. He yeah. made too many movies with Mel Gibson after he said that, sir. Well, they're both those guys who are supposedly on a redemption arc. Of some can, sort. I'm sure they're making those movies that are geared toward people that watch Yellowstone. I reject. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not participating in that um, redemption arc. In the Mel Gibson redemption arc? No, uh, nor should See, you. That's, a, that's a also a sign. Like People say, cancel culture. We need to end it. Uh, <laughs> it never existed never because existed. of all people that should have been canceled. Yeah. Uh, Mel Gibson is working regularly. But they only make bad movies. I know. Now. I'm just that's saying. That's what they do like, to you. <laughs> He said the most horrific things that yeah. a, pro a celebrity has said are in memory. It's bad as it, a verbal abuse, as bad as verbal abuse can get, probably. Him Listen, and Alec Baldwin. Yeah, because I think Alec Baldwin getting mad at his kid and calling her a thoughtless pig kind of makes sense. Well, it's it kind of funny. funny. Yeah, it made me <laughs> yeah. laugh, too. No, like, you can be real fucking fed up with somebody you love, yeah, and, and you can you can do shit like that. Like, But, like, Mel Gibson, what he said, oh, yeah. 
my mom had said worse things be, besides yeah. thoughtless pig to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same thoughtless. She, your Everybody. mother <laughs> said something worse than calling you a thoughtless pig, Andy. Yeah. Really? But I didn't take it. Like, I knew it was like. I didn't take it seriously. It's not gonna. It's not like some uh, trauma that I experienced. Uh, it's maybe like, it, it was is. just a fight. <gasps> maybe it is. Uh, oh, let's talk. Let's it, unpack it. Also, let's yeah. feel it. Feel it. Feel I it. Feel it humanizes parents because yes, uh, they're people. They get yeah. fed the fuck up. And kids are assholes. Yes, have kids you met a kid? <laughs> they suck. Like people were too quick because people didn't like Alec Baldwin. Listen, he's a murderer. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not like his biggest fan. His wife is weird, and you have too many kids. Your carbon footprint, sir. But that thing with his kid, like, come on, give somebody a goddamn break. Anyway, I don't know where. I don't know how we got here. And how. How do we. We were talking about celebrity brothers. But and I. Oh, yes. siblings. <laughs> Good God. How we didn't even fuck? get to the and Bacon then, Brothers. You, then you. Um, the Jonas Brothers? You conflated um, uh, Mel Gibson and Mark Wahlberg together. Yes. Then we talked about Mel Gibson. Yes. It's all coming back, all coming back to me now. Um, City Lopper's going on tour. A farewell tour. That girl's had enough fun. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. <laughs> like it's uh, like I'm Jonah done with legs fun. or something. <laughs> She's ready for retirement. I don't know. I, just, I send it to Freddie because I know he loves I love Cindy Lopper. Great. She's not coming to Cincinnati, and I'm starting to get a little offended. Listen, if Taylor Swift can come here. Get on it. Where, where's the closest city she's coming to? Columbus. Fuck Columbus. One of the most bland, boring cities oh, in the world. Not so. No. Not it so. Is true, and you know it. Great bookstore. Oh, it has a great bookstore. I'm sorry. Never mind. They have good game conventions yeah. there. They've got a very uh, active and large gay population. Okay, well, true. good for them. Get your fucking traffic signs in order so I don't get lost every time I'm there. Well, how often oh. are you there? <laughs> you make it seem Once like a year. <laughs> Once a year. Too you much. Make, you make it seem like you're there every other weekend. Like, ah. Oh, well, traffic. you guess what? I don't get lost <laughs> here, do I? Well, it's because you live here. Well... Um, I don't know why I'm defending Columbus. I don't so know much, why either. But, um, <laughs> I used to live there. I used to live there yeah. until I was six. And he came from Columbus. I mean, you're just like further into Ohio. You don't even have like the river to cross it's to get to our, a new state. It's our capital. Respect our capital. You know who lives there? Mike uh, Dwine. You think he's respecting your capital right now? Oh, I hope you were going to say the minions. No. But they did want to rename it Flavortown, and I'm very much. Columbus? Yeah. Is that true? Guy Fieri. They oh, want to rename gonna, Columbus. They're going to vote him the mayor. Is he from? I Columbus? can't I answer that. Arizona. Well, they wanted to rename it because Columbus, like, fuck that guy, right? Yeah. Mm. So you're going to just... Flavortown. Flavortown. Wow. I, I'd, I'd uh, vote for that. I would yeah. not. That's ridiculous. Oh, I don't live there. If there that would a, make it interesting. If there was a petition going around to name rename um, Columbus Flavortown... And yeah. I, I would only assign it if they agreed to call it Flavorton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the W. Yeah. No, they can just keep, keep the W. That's how you just pronounce it. It's like Louisville. What about Lebanon? Lebanon. What about Versailles? And all the other weird places that we name uh, that are named after foreign words that are not hard to find out how they're pronounced. And we pronounce them any old way we want. Phonetically. That's the way. Yeah. We are we are hooked on phonics. And it worked for me. I'll get any of them phonics. Anything else? How we how are we how are we supposed to pronounce Lebanon? It's Lebanon, but I think everybody calls it Lebanon in here. Uh, the the city is Lebanon. Yeah. Lebanon. The country is Lebanon. You see, you'll see. Do you see? It's true. And, you know, it's a weird thing around here. Le that happens. Sa. Yeah. Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Anything else we need to discuss at the top here? Anything else going on? Uh, Patreon. We, yeah, uh, patreon.com yeah. slash NOTLP. Join uh, the meetups. My favorite patron yeah. Uh, perk is the meetup. Yeah, we do that every week on Thursdays. But you also get cool shit like t shirts and mugs and stickers. Yeah. And access to some bonus content there, um, which is every other week right now um, as I uh, get my life together. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we got Origins over there where we go back into the vaults. And then we've got Topicana, which is also on the main feed, but you get it there earlier. Meetups, merch. Freddie already said all that. I'll shut up. 
about time. I was like thinking, yeah, what a yapping bitch. I know, I do talk a lot. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Yep, 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 yep. I sure <laughs> <laughs> um, So was it a tiger, do you think, that was seen in the woods last night? What? I don't, did you hear about this? Was it? Or did, we, did it get out of the zoo? No. No, they're not missing one. So we live in Cincinnati and down near where the University of Cincinnati campus is, there's a place called Burnett Woods. And somebody was reported seeing a tiger wandering down Martin Luther King Drive and into the woods. The thing that freaks me out the most about that is there is a lot of like unhoused people that live in those Burnett Woods. We might know somebody. Yeah, and um and if there's a tiger out there, mm. goddamn. <laughs> it's hard enough out there. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. I feel bad for both of them, the tiger and the unhoused people. Yeah. But like, there's yeah. no the the zoo's like, dudes, we got ours, so I don't know it what's going escaped on. Escape from one of those people that is it like a Tiger King thing? I I'm don't know. sure it is. I no further news. But this is a somewhat regular occurrence in this area. Exotic animals, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens because it's, we have so one person just said they saw a tiger and everybody believes it. I, it might have been one or two people. I, oh, I didn't yeah. like read the story very closely. There's no actual evidence <laughs> other than eyewitness testimony. You just yeah. saw a headline, didn't you? It's on yeah. the news. <laughs> yeah. The news said. And I'm like, a tiger. Were these people from Kellogg's? Maybe. They're looking for Tony. Yeah, it's all a promotion. They're going to find him, and he's going to be like, he's going to rescue a couple of missing kids. Everything's a lie, and everything is terrible. Yeah. Everything just wants to take away your dignity. How are those missing kids doing, Tony? I mean, our mas our football mascot is a Bengal tiger, so it's true. Why, well, we shouldn't be worried that a tiger is oh, at roaming least it's the on city. Our side, you mean? I mean, <laughs> I don't think the tiger understands that. <laughs> yeah, what they Freddie can, said. <laughs> they can inherently knows that uh, it's a Bengal fan. Yeah. <laughs> Big Bengals fan. It's just getting bored in the summer, waiting for the yeah. season to start. He, he just can't, he's just, it's just vibes, man. It's just Cincinnati just, vibes. Just Cincinnati vibes. A uh, plate of Cincinnati chili and a fucking tiger in the woods. Street vibes. In a very dense urban area. Okay, whatever. The world is a strange place to live in right now. I'll well, tell you what. Do you guys want to go on a tiger hunt after this? Uh, I want to be safe at home, away from tigers. I'll go look for tiger beat magazines at a thrift store if you want. But I, I am not. Isn't that funny that a tiger was uh, roaming around the woods? Tiger Woods. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Damn, took me a minute. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> took you explaining it, as in fact. <laughs> Maybe it's running away. It's uh, running away from its angry tiger wife after Aww. after Aww. the tiger cheated She went on after <laughs> that tiger's beamer with a, his club. Just I'm, put a blonde wig on a club. broom and chase him out of the woods. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait, 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 rolling pin. Yeah, <laughs> it is a rolling pin. Old fashioned. Tiger Woods has lived an interesting life. No shit. Anything else before we go on? <laughs> no, ma'am. All right. Turn the lights, it's the main attraction. Immaculate. Immaculate. <laughs> Immaculate. Immaculate. Oh, yeah. The Immaculate collection. <laughs> what a good time this was, huh? Yeah, I didn't know I wanted to see this movie because um, I didn't really know much about it, but I'm like, ugh, is this going to be boring? I don't like religious horror usually. Yeah, me either. Well, it's, it gets repetitive. Yeah. Um, uh, but this refreshed it fucking love this movie this is a good time this was fun felt like a blend of like a hammer movie but also like a ken russell movie like, very 70s yeah yeah real fun got the appropriate amount of sleaze without going over the top yeah the appropriate amount of sleaze it's yes still, it feels almost like the way this movie shot well long story short right she's in a, a new um nun. she's a new nun <laughs> well I, she's not quite a nun yet yeah. She's going to the nunnery. She's, she's on her way nunnery. to the nunnery. And she's mixed in with some delinquent types who are forced into the being in the nunnery as an alternative to whatever else shady thing was going to happen to them in life. So she's mixed in with them. So th this is almost a reform 
reform school girl story in that respect too. Caged like heat. the 50s. Not the main character, not Sydney Sweeney's character. She's comes off super naive. Has right, never right, done a right, bad right. thing in her life. And then she's paired up with Stalker Channing over here. Yeah, but the blend. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. the, Cause there's always that character who doesn't belong in jail in those movies. Yeah. And it's about her really being the innocent, you know, and everybody else being so tough. It has that vibe to the, the dynamic with the, the nuns, like, and they're clicky. They all There's a smoking nun. As she's the bad girl. <laughs> yeah. There were smoking nuns and smoking priests, and I was like, are you allowed it was to so, do that? Wasn't it humanizing, though? But they drink, and it's like, duh. I mean, it's, yes. It's, it's all filmed in Italy, right? Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. It looks like a. It. it they lit it. Oh the my location, God, the building. Gorgeous. In. That building. Yeah. To die. I don't know what it is, but. I don't um, either. It was really cool. They, uh, they lit it to look like a oil painting. Which was the right choice, but it also it feels like a high brow kind of movie for the first couple of acts, and then it gets kind of like almost exploitative and in, in a kind of fun off the rails like, way. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I got that didn't get that vibe because the opening was so intense. Yeah, so I didn't think it was going to go like high brow or anything. Oh, like you that. you weren't thinking like because at first it feels like a twenty four, but by the yeah. end it feels like Roger Corman. Mm-hmm. Well, I think A twenty four. R.I.P. Right. I think A twenty four has that vibe of, yeah, knowing what they're doing instead of going super highbrow. Who did? Who released this? Um, Neon. 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 They're like basically A twenty four. Yeah. They're like that. Um. Yeah. I. I did not know anything. I thought to myself, maybe this is just going to be another dark movie where it's dark in a church and it's scary because it's dark. Um. This was bloody. This was scary. This was well, silly. It was weird. It was weird. Uh, spoilers. Yeah. like uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Full-on um, spoilers, y'all. I liked... My favorite part is how they didn't go supernatural. Yeah. Or like... Um, well... Like, uh, like magic or anything like that. Um, they went... Leaned into the science. So one more, it. one more warning to you if you're listening. We're going to spoil. If you, if you missed yeah. that, we're going to spoil the ending of this movie if you haven't watched it. I mean, like, yeah. Spoilers, like, but I like how they like suggested it was going a certain way, but the reveal at the third yeah. act of what they're really doing, yeah, it was it, which is it fucking was, hilarious. Yeah, it wasn't like Rosemary's Baby, it where was, it was more like Jurassic supernatural. Park. Yeah, <laughs> it went this movie. Yeah, Freddie said they Jurassic Parked this movie. Yeah, and it gets that's fucking stupid, yeah. and like, I enjoyed how the, stupid the that crucifixion was. nail. Yeah, supposedly that. Was yeah. from the palm of Jesus Christ. You scrape a little Jesus <laughs> DNA off that bad boy. I like how this DNA survived. Yeah. One, not that I'm going to poke holes in a movie that is this silly, but um, but <laughs> it's just so freaking. The monologue, the mad scientist monologue from the priest. It's such a shortcut. It goes from this really carefully constructed, artfully done movie to when the pivot comes to. Yeah, we got Jesus' yeah. DNA. <laughs> they don't they don't bat well, an no, eye. But here's the thing, like um <laughs> they, they, it's all set up and payoff though. Like, yeah. And they, it didn't come st- totally out of left field because they set it up yeah. with the nail. Right. Yeah. So did. No, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They so did. like um it, but it was it was but it, in tone, yeah. it was very silly because compared to the tone of the first The part way of the they movie. set it up is all the supernatural stuff, like religious uh they're dipping into like Satanism almost, or yeah, something. like the Virgin Birth, yeah. but yeah. the Antichrist and all that stuff. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. like Shit. with the um the 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 ladies with the red. Oh, I like, love the uh, red masks and yeah. the um, and the black hoods and like the secret stuff that they're uncovering. And the girl, the the um one nun that like, hands Cindy Sweeney the little idol with that's made of hair. Yeah. Yeah, so well, you, she was snipping her hair yeah, in her sleep so was you, pretty creepy. You think it's going in like one direction, but then it's like, oh, it's just a mad scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? Okay. Yeah. Well, she gave her a fertility. She was an onk. It wasn't even a cross that, right? Wasn't She said hair. it was to bless her, to no, protect but it, her. Yeah. It, it, like, but I think there's some significance to that. That's a fertility thing. It looked like Maybe. a body, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Do she, I look like, like a Satanist? She was making like a doll almost. Maybe. I mean, I, I am a... The Satanist in the in the like modern day means we just believe in not being denying Wait, ourselves fun were things. They even not being an asshole. In this movie? No, no, no. I was saying there was an implication yeah. that possibly 
Yeah. What was happening was dork sided. <laughs> right. When really it was, it was, yeah, it was just it the kind church of was. was really behind it. So here's, mm, we, I gotta, we gotta get there later. Cause I, I want to talk about the end, but it's yeah. too early. Oh, okay. Let's talk about this part. Okay. Young women are just prey in this world, man. And I'll tell you, this movie like demonstrates that as she's kind of like trying to get herself from the airport to the nunnery. Like, yeah, she's a target the whole time. She's like the, the guards, like what a waste. And I'm like, ew, ew. But at the same time, she does have some agency. I just mean, she can't speak the language. She's just kind of like unable to like, protect herself just from there and then she gets to the nunnery and then you know it gets worse but like i just mean like the movie sets it up like the world outside man is coming to get you she just put her faith in god that everything was be okay that's how naive she is like yeah it don't work like that but it is interesting they do get they always let you see behind the veil of the 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 rest of the world looking at her you get that little comment like you were talking about the what a waste and that does throughout you always kind of have people who are just observing her no matter where she goes. Being stared at all the time. Yeah. And also it turns out that she doesn't have agency because she was set up. She was led from the, from like young childhood yeah. to now, because I guess her DNA uh, matched up crazy. But she, but she didn't know that she thought she had agency. Yeah. She gets to the nunnery and again, I just, it's so fucking gorgeous. All of it. I would live there in a heartbeat. Not as a nun, which says me. Yeah, as a nun supporter? Uh, no, not just has to be a cool house. Not right. no nuns. Okay. No religious stuff. No nuns. Um but they say that there's catacombs underneath it when they're like giving her the tour and you're like, see you later, yeah. catacombs. Yeah. yeah. Again, we'll be seeing you later. Set up set up and pay off. Yeah. We- you have to do it. I mean, if you don't do it, that's just incompetence. Yeah. If you don't have a good especially in a horror movie. They say that this nunnery is a refuge for elderly and dying nuns basically so like her job is going to be to help take care of them too so you get she has to be trained on how to wipe their asses so that looked like a and we didn't I, I, I didn't watch a trailer for this right no i didn't either I, like so you don't at this point in the movie when you they reveal that they care for these elderly nuns you kind of feel like oh this might be the whole movie it could just be yeah. her creepy things happening as she's taking care of these elderly nuns and, and the mentally ill ones too. Mm-hmm. And that could have been enough, but this movie was like, they did a hold my beer uh, and they were like, no, we can do a lot more than that. <laughs> you know, had it been another production, yeah. you know, team that might've just been the movie. I know. Um, so we get a rival right away. To Cecilia is Sydney Sweeney's character and her rival, um, I forget her name. Isabel. Isabel. Um, which really called her Iceman. She's the Iceman. Like this is top gun, top nun. She's a top nun. Yeah. She has to prove her nunnery. She is a yeah. bitch. Does she ever she never wins her over or does she? Oh no. I can't remember. Yeah, because Isabel she, she's, Isabel gets splattered. Yeah. Yeah. She, her, she goes face first. But she never she never looks at her and, and like goes you did good before that happened. She no. just gets splattered. No. That's some good nunning. <laughs> Top nun. Um, I noted the smoking nun. Why does that, just to see them doing anything normal, like if I walked into like a an Outback Steakhouse and saw a nun, I'd be like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on here? She, she wears like a blooming onion and the biggest steak ever. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, they don't, they don't dress like that, do they, though? Out in the world, they just dress like people. They're fucking undercover, man. Some. No, Out seen, there judging I've you. I've seen some where nuns in the wild. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where they wear those, like, I mean, I guess um, when I was a kid. Just those gray skirts and those white shirts. Sometimes it's just a turtleneck. The right kind of turtleneck is a dead giveaway sometimes. Never seen a sexy nun, though. A dicky? Movies have lied to me. Yeah. I know. They are all elderly. (laughs) Never seen a sexy nun. (laughs) Nope. But I don't live in Italy. There's probably some there. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, It's like this. Because it's Italy. Because that's where the Catholics are from. Everyone is sexy in Italy. And they're hot. Like the the priest in this movie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. sexy priest. Yeah. Sexy priest. He had to be a sexy priest. He couldn't have been an elder. I mean, like, 
Are you glad he was a sexy priest? Did it enhance the film? Yes. Well, it's <laughs> obvious. Like, if you see a sexy priest, you know, like, oh, you're up to no good. Something's going yeah. on. It's either going to be sexy or it's going to be stabby, you know, <laughs> or slash. Or, and never uh, the twain shall meet. Yeah. I stalked you for your DNA profile so I could impregnate you with what might be Jesus. Yeah. Just that, I don't know. <laughs> I think he's supposed to be kind of seductive in a way. Sure. I, like, of course. Like he's like represents in the beginning. You think he's like kind of the progressive character in the bunch and, but he's really the worst one. He's that guy. He's yeah. like, I'm the nice guy. Hey, well, this, I'm, I'm your friend. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm the good cop. He, um, Pretty called him Latin Tim Curry, and I think that's very apt. Yeah, he he has a personality and a look a lot like Tim Curry's. I don't know his evil mad scientist monologue later could have used more Tim Curry. Yeah, vamping. a little more, a little more over the top. Don't you think? No, yeah. I felt it. It was just enough. It, it was, was just it enough was, for this it, movie. It came to the line of over the top. It didn't yeah. bubble over. Right, where she sets him completely the fuck on fire. Yeah. And he lives. That's love it. crazy to me. But I just love how batshit the ending was. Well, it's like also I'm not. It's one of those movies that I I, I can't really pick at the strings too much. No, because yeah. the tone is just kind of whoa. It's yeah. very it's very it's goofy. Yeah. It's absurdist. I he, mean, and it, the, but it, it loves a jump scare. This movie, good jump scares yeah. though. Great. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed. Did home. not annoy me. Because sometimes if there's too much and you're like, okay, movie. Oh, we watch this together, the three yeah. of us. We don't always get to do that. Andy screamed. Yeah, that screeched. Was, that I was so fun. I don't know when I became that person you shrieked. that um, reacts audibly to jump scares. <laughs> I've done it. I think it's during the pandemic. We all spent yeah, too much like, time alone. I don't know when it happened, but like, oh, yeah. God. I, I I'm I apologize to all the people that strangers <laughs> that see movies with me because I don't mean to do it. Andy, like, as long as I, I know think it's you, great. you've done it. Yes, you no, know, it's like I, you, you guys know me, but like yeah. other people that yeah. strangers, like oh God, yeah, what, what's what's up with that dude? No, you're experiencing something. I love that. That's like the best. I um, I think what broke me was you. Yeah, when you showed me that. Oh shit! Oh look, see, there might be a there a ghost will pop up in this commercial. <laughs> it was that old thing on the internet where you <laughs> it, you have to watch the car commercial and the car is just winding through the woods and it's shot from way high elevation, so you have to like almost. Like, if you have to watch really close, just watch the car. The ghost comes out near the car if you watch the car real close and you get somebody with their nose almost against the screen and then it cuts to the, you know, like the uh, Pazuzu or something. Screaming at you. Yeah. And I. Andy, and, like, and, I saw years of your life poof away. Yeah. you. Andy went to a long <laughs> scream. A long but, uh, scream. Back to the jump scares in this movie. They, yes. were, they were real dumb. They weren't the typical, like, something just pops in your screen. and No, uh, these were good. Yeah. These were well-earned, and again. They were like, there were a lot of them, but they weren't annoying. Yeah, but they were, you have to want them. No, but it, it wasn't the same oh, type of jump, jump scare, scare over and over again. Right. Where, like, just something pops up in the background yeah. or right. uh, uh, a scary face pops up or something. But if somebody yeah, is, they're earned. If you're like the Conjuring universe jump right, scares, right? But if you're already burnt out on jump scares, these might not be the ones that yeah. just win you over. But they were really good. They were really effective, and they fit the story and what was happening in the scene. Well, they were also unexpected too, because a lot of times in movies, you it's it's like a dark room or something, and you just like know something's coming. Yeah, but the one, the first, the really good one, when the uh, the confessional. Yeah. You weren't expecting oh, shit, that at all yeah. because it was like well lit. You know that felt like a throwback uh, or a reference to uh, Day of the Dead. Do you remember that same jump scare where the hands come from uh, behind? No, like uh, I think this movie referenced a lot of movies without being obvious about it. Yeah, which I really like because yeah, the head um, style. Uh, it's the end, Blair. Like the end reminded me a lot of the descent. Oh yeah. 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 And like there's other like movies they yeah. kind of referenced and pay homage to without like being uh, like, hey, look, they're taking that scene from that movie, you know? Right. Yeah. Hey, you remember this great movie? This is not that great movie. <laughs> um, who said suffering is love? I can't remember, but I wrote that down. Uh, which character said it? Yeah, I don't I'm remember. willing to bet it was the priest. Yeah. Is that one? Bef- is that it was the old woman? I think oh. Oh, maybe was it? What were you going to say, Andy? 
Oh, it's, just, it's like I was thinking it might be with that scene where like uh, he uh, branded her foot or something. Maybe. Ooh, ouchy pouchy, huh? Yeah. I love the harpsichord in the score. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, another th- that's another thing. How I really appreciate how they didn't make it obvious uh, and uh, trite with the score because a lot of times in these religious horror movies you think and it's going to be like Don't yes <laughs> you know that type of like um this was more renaissance chamber yeah. music type stuff it's like very tinkly and um like yeah. modern yeah i liked it and it's not like that like, something along the lines like carmina Veronica or something you know right it fit the movie perfectly it fit it ain't that same old shit it, it it's like the music you hear when you look at like an oil painting of like a tavern or something so it pairs like with the look Really, really well. Great score. Good shit. Um, so the communal bathing area. I don't know why I wrote it down. Do you guys want to talk about it? It was weird. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I think it's... Is that normal? I the, think it's normal maybe in the olden times when the... giant bathtub. Nunnery was like... And also... Built. They're still using you, it. It, you you can't have a nun movie without some hint of like sexuality and right. ooh, tit- titillation, you know. You got a hint at the titties, yeah. which they do in this movie, and just the way that they um they were like uh positioned, it was very sexual, like uh, Cindy Sweeney's like laying back and some girls like straddling her behind, sitting on the uh the like tub. the neck rub position. Yeah. It's it's very like sensual, like it fits yeah. it fits with like a nun movie. I'm and telling you, man. It's that, very of the flesh. That was a that was a. a but it was if beautiful. That, if that yeah. was hot, a hot water. If that was like a hot tub yeah. situation. What? Damn, that what? was just a nice little situation. Oh, know. you want a? You just want a hot tub. I just want a hot tub. You just want to get in a hot tub. <laughs> You're yeah. like titties, ladies. I don't care. I like the titties and all that. Yeah, they can hang. They don't have to be there though. They don't have to be there. Oh. <laughs> I was I just like it was very. Uh, I didn't. The way they were bathing with the uh, full-on robes still on them. Yeah. Yeah. It just like, that's very uncomfortable, I bet. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> weird, like, level of modesty. Yeah, yeah they, they were wearing these, like, dresses. Yeah. Things. It's like that, that thing you wear when you're baptized. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same dress. I don't know. wear that. It's like, I, I, I guess, I know that they're trying to, like, uh, be modest, but, like, it clings to everything, honey. Hint <laughs> at the titties. <laughs> and it's see-through. Ladies. Yeah, well, you wonder how much of that is the costume department on the movie and how I much know, that's reality. Like that, I'm just c- c- coming from my perspective. I right. would hate to wear that because yeah. wet clothes, that's not comfortable. Yeah. Not comfortable. Think about it. Wet the chafing. clothes. Chafing. Um, so she turns up pregnant. Wouldn't you know Cecilia, it? Cecilia, Sydney Sweeney, and you're like, but wait. wait oh, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay. What the fuck's going on? I think that's why they had the pool in the beginning, so you could suspect that it was like something that happened there. No, no. because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Where they're like, maybe a, the drop of Jesus has come was in there. <laughs> that's not how that worked. Oh, she slipped and come and, and became pregnant. Because the yeah. movie, you know, at this point I didn't know what the movie was going to end up doing. And so I'm like, okay, who's doing funny shit at night? Because that's what I was thinking was happening. Because she would have weird dreams, yeah, and everything. Um, oh, and so when they're like the scene where everybody's talking about the doctors and the priests and everything, the doctor's like, "I, you know, her hymen was intact when when she got here when when I examined her." And I'm like, "Yeah, they did a pelvic exam on her when she got there." Now I get why now, but I'm like, she had to have thought that was normal to get a pelvic on your way into the nunnery. She, uh, her character was so naive and trusting that. It does make sense. Yeah. I, I'm like also it. naive and trusting in that I thought that when you would, <laughs> before you'd go into a nunnery, they probably would give you a 12 point inspection, <laughs> make sure that you're not carrying any I infectious mean, I diseases guess and stuff. Women are supposed to have them at certain intervals in their life, and maybe just from a medical point of view, they were like, "Let's just pop you up there and take a look." Like when you put other human beings together, is it like when you're like uh, uh, putting cattle together? Yeah, <laughs> you think that's what they're doing? <laughs> Make sure they don't have any diseases. That, yeah, yeah. They're, they're checking their teeth and everything. They put antibiotics in the food. <laughs> There's nothing to yeah. for herds of cattle. Until they're used to it. They change uh, their food when you get little, there. Got little tags on their ears. Yeah. And the brand on her yeah. foot. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
Women are cattle. They're using women like cattle in this oh. movie for sure. Have you ever heard of Project well, 2025? Google it. I was thinking, like, uh, this is actually one movie that I wish it was longer. Yeah. Uh, um, because you just jump to certain scenes so fast. I'd like oh, to have I appreciated some, that, yeah. though. I like that I liked pace. Yeah, but pace. It was kind of like a breakneck pace, which I kind of appreciate, but, like... Yeah. I was such. I was caught up in the mood. In it. You wanted to absorb the tone more of this movie. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So like, uh, it just jumps all of a sudden. Like, oh, you're pregnant. I like kind of mm-hmm. wanted maybe some more hints of what they might be doing to her and stuff like that. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't do a lot of like. They didn't, didn't do a lot of breadcrumbing. Yeah, like no. it was literally like you think it's this movie. Third act, it's not that movie. Yeah. It's this movie. You could never have guessed from what you get in the first act that later on it's because they had what they thought was Jesus's DNA profile. Right. It came out of left field, which was what made it so fun. Right. Um, also coming out of left field was uh, Iceman. Splattering. She fucking just came out. Well, she came from the, 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 the balcony above them. Yeah. <laughs> and then very, very omen. Yeah. She hit the ground. Ooh. And they rolled her over. She hit face first and they, showed it it was gnarly well between that and the other um moment where the nuns uh cut the tongue off that one chick well the tongue cut scene but the the face destroying scene with the crucifix oh yeah yeah. Yeah, like this movie that's almost like a very del toro that felt like like um pants labyrinth kind of like that level of the way just straight on shot destroy it mm-hmm. destroy that prosthetic head completely and then oh, yeah. move on had to have felt a little good in the moment to film that i'm <laughs> just beating this shit out of <laughs> oh, in the beginning with the uh broken leg scene. oh that hurt there's this little the bearing things. alive it's the little yeah. things like the nail and the broken leg scene like those are to me those are more effective than the uh um when they reveal the face after she jumped off and the, yeah. the, the beating with the uh, the crucifix. The nail is gross. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you find out now that the girl from the beginning and they're and in even Iceman, she I think was a failure as well. That these were other girls they tried to do this with. And um before Iceman dies, she's like, They should have tried again with me. It should have been me. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? You know, you're like they what and that's more for me like they're not gonna up with a turkey baster at night like what is going on but again uh, yeah they, there's no real breadcrumbs yeah. there and also you don't know if she killed herself or if she was thrown off right so like i don't i like that it would they left it yeah i air. didn't even consider that yeah. andy yeah they probably did throw her off yeah she tries to escape by using pretending like she's miscarrying using chicken blood which was that was slick as shit. It was slick as shit. And you're like, well, look at this clever girl. Yeah. But she she did a really poor job of hiding her evidence. Yeah. Right under the bed. <laughs> right she under the bed. She had. <laughs> Only place she could hide it. It's like there was a cabinet right there. <laughs> okay. So help me understand exactly what was supposed to be happening. They they think they've cloned Jesus off this blood or something. No, they just think that they um they are giving the son of Jesus, right? Aren't How they? are they using the blood to impregnate her? But you need a sperm somewhere. I didn't listen real well, hard. I, I thought they were probably get, laughing. It, it's the same way that they got the blood out of the mosquito in. Um, right. It's like they basically did some sort of recombinant thing. Okay. I guess, and put doesn't matter. Out. I think yeah. what the movie is trying to tell me. It doesn't really get If none it. of us know what it is, then they yeah. didn't tell us. And also, it's like. Who okay. cares? Super Pick dumb because it's, because it's a crazy idea in the first place. It's two thousand yeah. years old and it's a it's an iron spike and it's supposed like, to be living you know workable DNA on it. Yeah. Really, and like you just stop there with the believability. Who knows it? Like what else of contaminants you got in that blood you scraped off? There's probably yeah. some rust babies out there. Rust you babies. just gotta have some, faith. Some rusty yeah. babies. That that it one of them was just a foot. Oh, when they were panning yeah. around at the jars, I think one was just a foot. I wish it, we we saw one like a like a, a failed experiment with the son of Jesus, and you like see like a a, a full beard on him, <laughs> <laughs> and it his, looks like a yeah. painting of Jesus. <laughs> the um, <laughs> you know, she's trying to 
escape because she now knows like this isn't cool and this is going to be real bad. And I think she, does she think they are bringing the Antichrist into the world? No, I just think that she figures out that they're doing something. I think she's to her. Yeah, she's just getting out of there because yeah. of what they're doing to her. Because okay, because she finds that file right on her. And with that obvious article. Gotta find yeah. the file with the article from the old newspaper it's in the, it. The microfiche uh, <laughs> moment where like, uh, because appara- like she almost drowned as a child. Yeah. She's like, that's why God saved me so I could come to Yeah, this, she has a purpose you know? in life. Yeah. And for some reason, these uh, this church in Italy found out that... <laughs> Chose her to be the vessel and like well, led her when you in think her whole it, life to this moment. That's an interesting ploy because if someone, if you, if they were scouring the church, is scouring newspapers for survival stories, people always feel like there's some yeah, meaning. It's and a miracle. Then, then you could manipulate that person easily because they, if they already sang it in the article, like if it weren't for my belief in God, the bear would have finished eating both of my legs. <laughs> And then the next thing you know, the church showed up to persuade this one like guy to go have a butt baby or something. I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> or that lady that got her face ripped off by the monkey. That lady. Yeah. They should have lured her there. Yeah. A faceless nun. <laughs> yeah. The faceless nun. The one of, is it the, it's one of the priests, not sexy priest, mm-hmm. who says to her, if this is not the will of God, why does he not stop us? Yeah. Oh, because he ain't real. That's such a stupid. Well, I, lo- I love that stupid yeah, they logic. Pick and, they pick and choose what God does and doesn't do. Yeah. Right. Why doesn't he stop us? Why it's does he, nat- not, why nat- does nat- he come make me stop it? <laughs> yeah. Because none of this is real. All right. Um, she beat that lady to death and then pop goes the mucus plug. And now she's in labor. But she still goes on a fucking murder spree. <laughs> she does. In labor. Yeah. She chokes him with that rosary. It was badass. Like, she thinks she kills him. Or is that this was, the first time she thought she killed him? Or no, wait, no, does like he get out? That, like, no, she killed that guy totally. Yeah, that's oh, the old priest. It's the old priest. Yeah. Never mind. You're right. She thought she killed. She burned the uh, uh, priest to death. And sexy yeah. priest got lit up. Yeah, he got Freddy Cooper. But then all of a sudden, you know, you're watch you feel like this is it. The movie's ending. And then you start hearing the fire extinguisher and you're like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh because he was he should have been completely engulfed in flames. Like they there was so much fucking fuel she spread around that room. I know, like he comes he chases her through the catacombs. <laughs> we got to the catacombs, don't you worry. And he chases her through there, and you see him, and he's, like, sort of burnt up, like, a bunch on the one side. But I'm like, dude, that whole room yeah, went he up. he was, like, two-faced, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It was artistic uh, yeah. license. Like, a, a similar thing happened on Breaking Bad, and that whole man's face was gone. Oh, that was a great episode of Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a show! She eventually kills him with that fucking nail. Yeah. She got him. She stabs him with it. Right in the neck. So well, she's really gross. She, she stabs him through the neck and pulls it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, squirt, squirt, squirt. She, she busted it. She, she made it. Sure. And who was it? Amy, did in you say the, the minute you saw the spike, you were like, someone's going to get stabbed with that thing or something? No, I don't I think thought I thought one of it. you guys called it. No, I, I said like, because there's a scene like she goes, when she's giving birth, she pulls the, uh, yeah. she goes and gets the spike and. She she, she she got it for a reason. Like oh, like uh, I I know what she's gonna do with that. I got gotcha. you. Now it's time to have this baby. <laughs> so we just squat and scream. Yeah, which I think is about uh, right. Great scene for her. I and read in the uh, IMDb trivia that there were only two takes of that. Yeah, it's like a one long take basically. And they used the first one. It was intense. Yeah, so she um gnaws through her umbilical cord Mm -hmm. well the thing about it is like mama bear she was doing something that i think you could give you could give yourself a stroke with what she was just acting the level of pushing she was doing she was put like she was she was doing something she was in it man in it to win it i get it why people were so like the what i had heard about this movie was watch it for her performance you know see i was like unimpressed in the the beginning i'm like okay well i mean but then she gets she gets progressively more cool i think she was so dedicated because she's 
turns out to be a producer on this movie. Yeah, she wants so, to like, make some money. She has some like uh, investment in it. Well, did Amy? Uh, were you around? She found that thing about she had an audition. Yeah, she, she told us that like yeah. at seventeen or something. Yeah, the IMDb trip. Yeah, it was like yeah. in development for a little bit. Yeah, and she eventually was like, "Let me produce it. Let's do this." So she, it came full circle. When she got some juice. Yeah, good. I'd yeah. say good for her. She's girl bossing it. Good for you. She is girl bossing. She is like better. Watch out. I HBI love it. say, but she okay. Yeah. She takes a rock and kills the baby. So. Credits. Is she yeah. killing it because she's like, fuck you, you can't make me do this. This is disgusting. You took you raped my body and you took away all of my control. Um, or is she killing the baby because she thinks it might be an antichrist? I think it's those plus one other thing. I think she's killing it one because what came out wasn't human. Yeah, because we saw what was in the jars. Yeah. So it just it was it's a just failure. Another yeah. one. Okay. There's and no like, way should this should ever work. Yeah. It, it, right. it, like for the movie to have any credibility after the ridiculous setup of the DNA thing is that it couldn't possibly yeah. ever work. Yeah. Um but they're going to keep doing it and that's what's scary is they're going to keep yeah. trying to do this thing even though it should never ever work. Well, they're all dead now, so. Yeah. And it, it's probably not viable anyway. Like the uh, little breaths it was taken it was like those noises yeah, man yeah. it was Ugh. very like inhuman almost yeah yeah so but like, also there was definitely that thing that it wasn't hers you know what i yeah, mean yeah. like like you put this you you can have it back thank you um you know what in the wake of roe v wade being do you think destroyed. this is a uh a cautionary tale it's just like fuck you, get your hands <laughs> off my body, tail man. A cautionary tale about joining the nunnery. <laughs> fuck your guns and fuck your gods and fuck all of your control over everything. That's what I get from it. But then that's also well, that's obviously the root younger. of my mental illnesses right now. Well, also, no, but that's that's not just you. That's yeah. like this is like one of those things where after the Boston Globe uh, spotlight thing. With the priests, mm, fuck like hell. every everybody wants now, like every even mainstream audiences will enjoy a movie that would have been protested. You think Mel Gibson's loving this movie? Uh, I doubt it, but <laughs> I will tell you though that like a movie like this had come out in the eighties, there would have been yeah. picket it. Oh yeah, I remember you yeah. know, yeah, Madonna and like a prayer. Yeah, but now it's 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 literally like almost a mainstream film. It's wild. Great time. Yeah. And I love how uh, creaky this movie was. Oh, everything creaked. <laughs> All so of the creaky. hinges needed some WD-40, and I'm so glad they didn't some, have it. Um, real heavy sleepers at the at this nunnery because well. <laughs> so many people sneaking around at night, like, creak, and, and she did what she wanted. You know what? The, this makes me want to watch Suspiria again. It's got that vibe yeah. of just a cloister yeah. of people. At a cloister? A cloister. Is it, isn't a cloister where nuns hang out? You know yeah. what? I don't know. I think so. No, a cloister is the female version of a glom of people. Oh. Yeah. I think cloistering is what religion. Why do we got to gender everything, man? <laughs> I didn't make the language. <laughs> and also, I feel um, these nuns, this, this society, whatever, uh, they were not very good at covering up their crimes no. because they made it very obvious what they were doing when the... Um, the, the bad girl nun, mm -hmm. where they were cutting her tongue out. They just did it out of the open, basically. Yeah, well, I think... The, Are they true believers? Are I'm, they doing this for God? I'm sure. Okay. I mean, I, I guess. I There's just got to be zealous. How do yeah. you get so far gone? But, I mean, how do you get so far gone, Amy? It happens all the time. You're watching that... Abu Ghraib. Fucking Tinder well, I've, cult I, I think show right now. Maybe they start these people that... These TikTok cult. These girls that went there... They started off wanting going there for good reasons, but then they saw what could happen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's why they made it so obvious all the horrible things they were doing to these ladies to just keep them well, in line. Keep yeah. them in line, yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. Fucking hell, man! Religion. Mm hmm. It's good Complex. movie though. All right. Yeah, this is a nice surprise, actually. This yeah, I didn't expect yeah. to like this so much. Any uh, what are we uh, what are we doing next week? Are we doing the devils? You want to do the devils? Yeah. I'm into the devils. The devils. Yeah. What's that? Uh, it is a 
Ken, I think it was a Ken Russell movie. Yeah. Ooh. I'm pulling it Sounds up. Sounds like it's right up my alley. 1971, Vanessa Redgrave. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oliver Reed. Yeah, Ken Russell <gasps> directed it. Oliver Reed, the famous, famous drunk. And it's uh, 17th century France, Father Urban Grandier's protection of the city of London from the corrupt uh, Cardinal Richelieu is undermined by sexually repressed nuns, uh, so forth and so on, chicanery, and uh, Sounds like we're going to get I've some never, nunsploitation. I've never seen this, but I heard it's a very uh, sexy movie. It's a racy one. <laughs> I mean, by, I don't know. It's, it was, it's sleazy. But it was, that, I think it's entertaining. That's... <laughs> That's the hallmark of non-exploitation. Yeah, sleazy, definitely. We, we might have to dig for this one to find it, like in the backyard or something. Yeah, in the backyard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honey, look what I found. I, all right. No copy of the devil. Kind of like a cemetery, <laughs> maybe. Um, guess what I found, guys? The list of the Beelzebubs. Remember last week? I couldn't hey. find it. Um, it was on the floor. And at the end of every show, we always say hi to our Beelzebubs. Patreon.com slash NOTLP. Um, as I stare at both of my co-hosts looking at their phones right now. And I'm trying very, to find to where you can watch I found, this. I feel very <laughs> yeah. supported. Hey, man. We're you're right. It's you fine. Do. I don't mind. All right. Patreon.com slash NOTLP. NOTLP. Did I say that? I don't know. Matt. I'm going to do the Wordle. Brandon and Emily. Jeff Fall. I own a good one. I own a great one. Dr. Brian. Old Dirty Bilstered. Bill Farner. Blaine Yogurt. Jordash Jeans. Monica. I don't know why I said it like that. Jeremy, Cassie, Gamora, Ernie, and Dave. Thank you so much for listening. You guys are amazing. I forgot to cue up the music, so I'm just going to keep um, talking, and it's fun to uh, do. Supposedly, we're going to watch the Devils if we can. (laughs) If we can. Or it'll be a surprise. Okay, bye. (laughs) Bye.